on the next one. As I go to deliver mail, I'm gonna walk on the sunny side. Welcome. I'm um, recording myself vlogging on the NX1 for a purpose. I'm gonna deliver mail. Also, I'm doing a comparison because a lot of people wanna know R5 versus R5C. Why did they take out IBIS, right? And they're like, well, you know, true videographers don't want IBIS. They want to be able to control the stabilization with their camera. If they want shakes, they want shakes. If they don't want shakes, then, you know, they can stabilize it themselves, just like I'm using right now with a gimbal. The other day I went out to talk about the R5C and the C-Log2, yada, 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 when an interesting thought came up. Now, I was using this gimbal that I'm using now on the R5, and I turned off IBIS. All the stabilization was gimbal-based. Now, because the sensor itself is not really secure or like locked in because you have sensor stabilization, it's not as secure, but for average filmmakers that are not doing like high chase car scenes, is that IBIS going to be missed? Would it be a problem if, you know, you just turned off IBIS when you don't want to use it, when you want to actually move the camera around? That's why I'm comparing R5 to the Samsung NX1 which does not have in-body image stabilization, but does have digital stabilization. Now with digital stabilization, digital stabilization would be comparable to what the R5C gives you, because R5C gives you digital stabilization. And we'll compare the shots. Now, first of all, I will say the Samsung NX1 that I'm using now, that's the whole point. It's really the only camera that I have that has digital in-body image stabilization but no actual physical in-body image stabilization. So it's just digital, which is the closest I'm gonna to get to a comparison since the R5C does have digital in-body image stabilization. And is that better? Is it better to get digital stabilization overall versus in-body image stabilization? One thing I noticed with my R5 shots when I had it on this gimbal is that because of the way I walk and it's not steady, I was able to see kind of like, with a bounce, you see kind of a little shake off of the shots. And if, I'll show the footage right here so I can show you what I'm talking about. But will the NX1 show that because the sensor is actually locked in? Or will it be kind of a little bit smoother? Again, using a gimbal. So a gimbal is supposed to smooth out micro jitters, make the footage look, you'll have a little bit of wobbliness on the verticality standpoint up and down because it's the nature of a three axis gimbal. My anticipation is that you will probably have a smoother experience without IBIS if you're using a gimbal versus a sensor that still might shake a little bit as you move around. And we all know that in-body image stabilization, at least when it comes to shots, like you're not moving, it'll be way better, way better. But if you're walking around, I don't know. Is IBIS better than digital? I couldn't test it on the R5 because the R5 does not let you use digital IBIS only. And that's almost on purpose. Like they want some sort of flaw so that they can upsell you to the R5C. But it's like, why can't we have R5C features but with IBIS? <laughs> because there's no perfect camera. Except for this NX1, which I'm using now. That's the perfect camera, right? <laughs> I'm also going to test the R5C versus the NX1 when it comes to just general IBIS without having it on a gimbal to see if digital IBIS looks better than IBIS on the R5. So let's go to those shots. So after testing both of these when it comes to stabilization, I'd have to say that the R5 does a great job, but so does the NX1 when it comes to image stabilization. They just work differently. And that's why the R5C, I guess, can take the approach of saying, even though we've got digital image stabilization, you're just going to operate just fine. Now, going over the results and going over everything that I just tried out, I could say that when it comes to working with a gimbal, when it comes to working with different external stabilizers, and just what I was able to see from the NX1, the NX1 did a marginally better job when it comes to stabilization, but it's barely noticeable when using a gimbal, when you have image stabilization turned off on the R5 versus no 
in body image stabilization on the NX1. It's slightly less like awkward micro jitters that you'll have on the NX1 because the sensor is locked in and only follow the movements of the actual gimbal where the sensor, because it's not locked on, kind of moves in a little bit. And then when doing the shots here, just holding the camera, right? I can see that the R5, you can still see like the wobbly jello effect and like in the corners. Whereas when you're looking at the NX1 using its digital image stabilization, it's a lot more steady, just holding it in front of you. However, flip side, when you start walking, just the digital image stabilization on the NX1, because of the rolling shutter, you get a lot more jello. Unfortunately, the NX1 suffers from a lot of rolling shutter. Now, because the R5C has the same sensor as the R5, I would anticipate that that's not as prevalent on the R5C. So because the R5 doesn't suffer from too harsh of a rolling shutter effect, it would be less noticeable than it was on the NX1. When using image stabilization and walking on the R5, you still get those jello effects and it's not really that bad, but it's still prevalent. Now, when using the NX1 along with the optical image stabilization, I would say that that performance was actually pretty good because you're having both image stabilization digitally and the optical image stabilization working together and the optical image stabilization helped reduce the jello effect that you would get and was actually not a bad experience, pretty smooth, still not perfect, but for a camera that at this point is like eight years old, that 4K looks pretty good, butter sharp, and because it's oversampled from over 6K, it looks really good, really good. Now on the R5, when turning on electronic, along with in-body image stabilization, and then of course going a step further and going enhanced, the jello effect kind of still like in the corners still happens less to of a degree but it still happens however if you're just holding it steady like i showed before it, it is improved and it's less prevalent but it seriously crops in on the look i had to hold the the camera like this far from me i was still pretty much taking up most of the frame right now so again still good and in most parts when you don't need image stabilization and you want to use a gimbal it you still micro jitters are barely noticeable to be honest but if you're like in fast moving subjects or or like in a car where it like bounces and whatever you will notice some micro jitters unfortunately because the sensor is always also bouncing around whereas on a locked sensor and again i use the nx1 as an example for this video because i don't have any other camera that has digital image stabilization besides the nx1 so that's why nx1 did most of this video and nx1 to this day still looks pretty darn good it's actually sharper than most of my cameras and it's sharper than the standard 4k on the r5 so still a bad boy and i will say that the the 4k files that are down sampled from over 6k are easier to work with than the files from the R5 when you're not recording log footage. And that's just kind of my quick as assumption. But well, let me know what you guys think. Do you prefer in-body image stabilization or are you okay with digital? Um, this was part of one of the tests that I really wanted to do because was I willing to give up the R5's IBIS to go with something that's only digital? And quite honest, after this comparison, digital with optical image stabilization works really well. So if you're concerned about image stabilization, you'll be just fine on the R5C by getting a stabilized lens, working with the digital image stabilization, and then just using that or turning it off and using a gimbal. You have those options that unfortunately with the R5, you're kind of stuck because they won't let you use digital only and work that together with just the optical image stabilization. It's you have to have in-body image stabilization. And that's just kind of like canon. Why would you do that? And I don't think they're gonna fix that in a firmware update because they're just saying, hey, you wanna use that separately? Go for the R5C. But nonetheless, when you need to hold it handheld and you're not moving fast or blogging and walking, you need to rely on that in-body image stabilization. The R5 is still great. And I really, at this point, 
I really am sticking to this camera rather than getting the R5C. And I got a couple other comparison videos as to why that's the case. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment down below. I've talked enough, but uh, you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later.